Right, welcome everybody to Lockdown Sports Quiz Live. It's episode five with me, Derek Alberts, and Tyron Jabu Barnard, brought to you by Raider Media. So we've had a, a couple of stellar guests in the past. Last week, we had Justin Reed Ross teamed up with Chris Morris. This time around, we've got another cricketer teaming up with a cricketer, uh, a man who needs no introduction, but I'm going to give it to him anyway. For Han Berhardin, he's played uh, 59 ODIs, 38 T20s, and uh, geez, you go into centuries when you talk about domestic cricket. Fudgy, how are you doing? Eric, yo, man, what's happening? I'm good, thanks. A bit cold here in Pretoria, but lucky. Yeah, no, it's uh, good to have you on board. Uh, I know that you have been a part of the Lockdown Sports Quiz on Tuesday night, so we thought we had to extend it somewhat. First and foremost, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your teammate. Yeah, my teammate that I've chosen for tonight uh, needs no introduction. Uh, from uh, a very sunny welcome in the free state. <laughs> um, yeah, we grew. We know, I, know, I know Dean up since 2006. Um, and the Dean I'm speaking about is Dean Alger. Uh, Protea's opening batter, Titans captain in the, in the shorter formats. Um, yeah, you'll be my guest tonight. 
Lovely. Why did you decide on Dean? Uh, I know that Rulof van der Merve had a couple of words uh, a little earlier saying that you made a fantastic choice choosing Dean because <laughs> how, did, how did he describe him? Well, I think he described Dean as a tree of knowledge. I think he was being a little bit sarcastic, to be brutally honest. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now Dean and I are good mates. And we, uh, yeah, I thought that would be a, a, a laugh. And if we were to get one, over Aiden and Nari, uh, we all kind of live in a similar area. You know, that'll be that'll be good for our street cred. <laughs> yeah, Dino, welcome to the show. I was on mute there, guys. Thanks for that. Um, <laughs> oh, that's, that's, all to, that's all to a good start. No uh, way. Someone yeah. muted me. So, I mean, it's just technology is obviously failing already. But <laughs> evening, evening, gents, are you? Yeah, great. Thanks. Dino, did uh, when Fudgy came with uh, the invite, did you take it hands down or were you a bit uh, skeptical? No, I took it hands down, Derek. Um, always a good opportunity to come have a luck with the boys. And uh, yeah, usually we have a, maybe at, at Brazenhead where there might be a few beers involved. <laughs> but now uh, it's in a confound of my uh, spare room with uh, a glass of red. But so be it. I'm sure it's going to be a lack of luck. That's nah, going to be a jewel. Uh, cheers. Thanks very much. I'm, I'm joining you uh, on the red. Uh, ty has got uh, a nice glass of apple juice in front of him too. Mentioned Ty at the beginning, but without further ado, my playing partner, Ty, how are you doing? Yeah, this wouldn't be a bad four ball in a round of golf. I mean, um, Dean, we know, is a pretty good golfer. Fudge, I think uh, if you're a cricketer, you're probably a good golfer. And uh, Derek is a good ball spotter. So it wouldn't be bad to, to get together and have a four ball. I, I think you will very. I, I think you mistaken. The fact that I can every now and again eat a cricket ball does not mean I can eat a stationary uh, a golf ball. I mean, I, so I just need to be careful, to be honest, to be playing in a golf. Station. Oh, that's fine. I'll share a card with Dean, and you and Derek can share a card. Uh, yeah, but welcome, gents. Uh, let's let's. Uh, Derek did talk about the leaderboard. This is episode five, halfway through our our first season of the Lockdown Sports Quiz Live. And of course, this is how it stands currently. Warren Whiteley, the sole rugby representative with his partner, Lace Hallendorf. They sit at top on 18. Brandon Stone and Aidan Markram with 17. Uh, Justin with Chris Morris at 16 and a half. And of course, another cricketer, Rassi van der Dissen with 15 in week one. So you guys know what the target is. You need 19 off of 31. Nice, easy run rate in modern day cricket. Um, and how it works, quite simply, we have four rounds, the opening four rounds, each out of five. Uh, the best score at the end of four rounds so far has been ten and a half. And then you have the final round. The final round is the shootout, not something that well known in cricket. Uh, probably a little bit like three-team cricket, not everybody knows what's going on there. But it's out of ten, and um, obviously if you get ten out of ten, we'll give you the bonus eleven. But that final round has a one minute time limit so it uh puts you on the spot it's it's the truest test that you can get on a sports quiz live uh, you know derek I, i've been trying these metaphors uh and i will say it, that golf was a lot easier with the leaderboard but uh i like the 19 or 31 sounds sounds simple very attainable for cricketers yeah, very much so. Uh, certainly not uh, with the two that are, are here. They're, they're, they're guys that are known for very good strike rates, but uh, more importantly, how is their quiz knowledge? Uh, Dean alluded to it a little earlier, saying that uh, they're regular uh, features over at the Brazenet for their pubs. So this is going to get quite interesting. I think without further ado, Ty, should we get into it? Let's go. Round one. Yeah, round one underway. So now both of you are teammates. You're not competing against each other. Uh, Fahan brought Dean on board so that you could give him some help and advice. So I'm going to be giving you five questions, four of which are mine, one of which is posed by uh, the viewers. So thanks very much for all the viewers tuning in. Also, we had a, a couple of tweets sent through earlier from uh, guys and ladies saying, uh, giving a, a couple of questions. So first up, I want to know from Fungi Dean, what was the first European country outside of the United Kingdom to host the Ryder Cup? Outside of the United Kingdom, is that what you said? Yeah, to host the Ryder Cup. Do you know? You play more golf than me, but That doesn't mean I know bloody Ryder Cup history. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spain, Italy, France. Spain, Italy, France. Um I'm going to go with Spain or France, dogs. Um, yeah, probably not Italy. Spain or France. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna hedge. I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with Fine Stuggy. Are you sure? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that we got two, um, I don't know if those two are right, but I mean the fact that we got that is already. A, well, the fact that we got European countries, I mean that's, I mean that's a start. Yeah. No, it's a big start for us. It's a massive start. Uh, France. The Ryder Cup, France, France. Yeah, let's go with that one then. We're going to lock in France. Yeah. Okay, so, so France did host the most recent European Ryder Cup. Uh, it was at Le National, if I'm not mistaken. The Europeans uh, walked that one. Um, but they didn't host the first one outside of the UK. That uh, belonged to Valderrama, Valderrama Golf Club in Spain. 1997 so it was there so there. close so close. well it was, it was i mean it was one of them so yeah it was one of them just not the one that you picked okay uh, <laughs> not a good start. <laughs> sort out of one okay so dino if you know the answer to this then you and fudgy are exceptionally close um fudgy you made your first class debut for western province in port elizabeth in 2004 what were your scores across both innings and how many wickets did you take? Bro, how much I know that? That's like 14 years ago. <laughs> yeah, is this well, a question? Yeah, that's, this is the question to Fahan. Oh, well, is it too fudgy? Uh, okay, perfect. Well, it's to all of us. Well, to both a, of you. It's a team effort. <laughs> it's a team effort, yeah. Do you know, if, if you know the answer, I'll be very impressed. <laughs> no, you, I'm out. Of. I, I definitely yeah. got a 50 in the game and then I think I got a duck. I think I got 60 and zero. And I got a, I definitely got three, three for, three for 49 in about 19 overs. Cause back in the day I used to bowl. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad that came to an end. <laughs> so in the total game, Derek. In the total game, I don't know, wickets and runs. Is there no leeway like, like uh, runs wise? I'll, I'll, I'll give you leeway in terms of wickets. Leeway in terms of wickets. I mean, I don't know what I scored in 2004. <laughs> well, 16 years ago. Have you no, seen well, the this reason, game up here? Uh, the, reason why, the reason why I'm giving you leeway is because you're pretty much spot on already. I think I know, you're quite I, close to the runs, dogs. Yeah. I am. I know I scored 16 in one of the innings, but I'm not too sure. I think I got a duck in the second or duck in the first, 16 in the second. I definitely got the three for. I'm not sure if I got a wicket in the second dig, though. The fact that you remember the amount of runs you went for in 19 overs, I think you get something. I mean, it is something that around that. Something <laughs> around that. So I'm going to go with uh, what league are we talking with the wickets? The wickets, one. yeah. What, what, one off, yeah. I'll Are give you one, ra one, ra one run off and one wicket off. One run either way. I mean, that's come on. <laughs> that means you're right there, bud. That means you got them, dogs. Four. Yeah. Four. Okay, I'm going to go. To, what is, is it worth half a point? One, uh, one. No, everything's worth one. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to go with four wickets. Okay. Are you going to tell me if I'm right on the four wickets? You're right. Okay. Because that's what the, what was the wickets, by the way? It was <laughs> one one for thirty three and three for forty eight. Oh, I was close, three for forty nine. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, okay, so we are halfway there, and yeah. it runs within one run either way. Yeah. Oh. Sixty. Okay. Okay. In total, sixty in total. So in the first innings, you made sixty runs on the dot. And your second innings, you were gone for a duck. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. I can't believe I'm celebrating a duck. unreal, bud. <laughs> I'm celebrating a duck. Yeah. That's your greatest, greatest duck ever. That, that, is, that is amazing. 60 duck, one for 33, three for 48. That's an impressive debut, first class. That's impressive. Yeah, right? well, it is, I, 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 did a, I took the new, like the new nut. I don't think my back can handle any sort of bowling at the moment, but yeah. Do you know in that in that game? Can you remember there's one test player playing, and he batted at number four? Do you know who it was? It's not a quiz question. It's just for fun. No, it's not. It's not. This is just a funny. Did he play, for, did he play for the Cobras? He I played for the Province. Province. Yeah, he played for Province. 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 I don't know. I can't remember that that one. It was it, it was, was Paul game. Paul Adams. Paul he Adams. Four. Oh, yeah, batted at four for province. He made it, he made it down. So he didn't bat at four in the second innings. 
I think he might have been night watchman, but there's no way he better for him. Dino, we off the mark, boy. We got one. Yeah. One out of two. High five. The issue off the mark. We are off the mark with a dirty one to midwicket. Dirty Nick through third man. <laughs> Next uh, question three. Uh, who captain? Now this is a question we asked the other night in the, the lockdown sports quiz for the private members. Who captain the British and Irish Lions in the opening test against the All Blacks in 2017? Doggy, oh, yeah, this is you. Uh, this is your mm-hmm. gravy, boy. Uh, British and Ireland. And Britain Irish. and Irish Lions. Was it? Was it in New Zealand? In New Zealand. The, in New Zealand, the opening test in 2017 against the All Blacks. So you're saying that there was different captains. That's up to you to decide. Who would have played three years ago, Fudge? Uh, well, and it's going to be either um, Sam Warburton. Sam, no, 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 Sam Warburton, or it's going to be the Irish lock, uh, Paul O'Connell. If my memory serves me correct. I don't think it's Bristol. I don't know if he was played the first test match and he got injured. Didn't, it, the didn't it Driscoll retire before that? That's also the other thing. I think he, but he played till quite late. It's going to have Sam Warburton or Paul O'Connell, the Irish lock at number five, which is the shaven head guy. That is plenty of answers coming through. None of them are the ones that you've said. From who? Who are the answers coming through from? People. People, yeah. People that are watching. I was, I actually watched, I was in Bali actually watching the rugby, but I, 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 I specifically remember watching the last test match, but I can't remember who was captain. I'll give you, I'll give you one, I'll give you one little clue. The guy who okay. captained okay. them in the first test was dropped from the squad for the second. The Jeez. guy who captained the first test was dropped for the squad in the second test. Yeah. Dropped. Sam Warburton. Brings to mind. I know he's retired now, but gonna push you. you know, yeah, Sam, Sam, Sam Warburton. Go Sam with Warburton. your gut, Yeah. Go with your gut, son. Okay, yeah. that's your final answer. You're locking it in, Sam Warburton. Yeah. So Sam Warburton was the squad captain. He captained them in the second and third Test matches. The Not man the first. the first was Peter Mahoney. Oh, yeah, is that? oh, that's an Irish flanker. It's an open side yeah. flanker. But I mean, Peter, man. I mean, come no on. No one's He's heard of him weird. before. But... Who is that? <laughs> man? Oh, was he a token player? Reach for dream. Or what? Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's give him a gig. <laughs> okay. I, I might have oh, had yeah. to change one of my questions quickly after that comment. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I was close. I mean, I, 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 I was, Sam, I was close Harry. anyway. Mm. They're, they're from the same continent, so I mean, yeah. well, it's a step in they're the right <laughs> next, next time, Next time you get run out, you can explain to them, no, but you were close. Might not have been on the line, but you were close but, enough. Um, uh, but, but, but you know, at rugby, it still amazes me, actually, because uh, we were, we, we traveled quite a bit together. And uh, last year, we were in Spakopmunds. And our yes. same place, it was around two in the morning and you and I find each other at some pub called the Bra House. And two in the morning. Yes. yes and, and you pulled out your phone and you yes. pulled out your notebook on your phone and you yes. started reading to me every single member of the Springbok squad who you picked for the Rugby yeah. World the, Cup. The 31-man 31, 31 the yeah. Rugby World Cup squad yeah. was picked three weeks before. And, and well, yeah, on, you, on, 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 on my phone, it was. On your phone. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You, you nailed it. And, and also, we traveled from Swakop to Vintuk a couple of days later. And we, we drove on a Saturday. It was during the, the Super Rugby final. There wasn't an SA team involved. I love rugby, but there was no SA team involved. I, I really couldn't have given a damn. You brought out your phone, <laughs> and we watched for two hours the Super Rugby final in the back of a... a, a Suzu. Suzu, it was. You, you, love your, you, you love your rugby, Fudge. I love my rugby. I can't stress it enough. I'm currently watching, obviously, the Super Rugby down in New Zealand. I used to play rugby when, when I was at school, and I loved it. My father played rugby. My uncles played rugby. I just, I dig it. I, would, I, I reckon in my, in a different life, a parallel universe, I'm, a, I'm basically a rugby player instead of a cricket player. And you played wing, eh? I played wing slash fullback. Um, to be honest, my... My attacking prowess was great. My defensive abilities was um, m- medium. 
<laughs> and, and and Dina yourself, I mean, how does a boy from Valcom end up playing cricket and not rugby? Um, I went to English school, so um, yeah, there are English people from Valcom. Um, but I went. Uh, I went to, ah, okay, but keep going with that. <laughs> um, no, I went to English school. We didn't have rugby growing up. Um, I played like in sub is the only time I ever played rugby, and. Um, that was it. I mean, I've got the ball ball sense when it comes to kicking the ball or passing the ball, but um, I chose other options, uh, which I thought were a better interest for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, my my dad was actually born in Belcombe, so also an English speaker. So I know. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Never mind one. There, there's actually two people that come from Belcombe no, English. He, mu he must be a good guy already, but I have never <laughs> met him. He must be a great guy. But, but back to back to the rugby thing. Fudge is yeah. an absolute rugby nut. I mean, he's. He's done my head in like we used to room together when he when we were at the titans and yeah the, rug, the rugby would be on all the time in the, in the room and i'll be like please but i can't watch this this is crap put it off <laughs> and he'll be like okay i gotta leave the room just so he can watch his rugby in the mornings he's an absolute fanan, uh, fanatic so uh, yeah he really is so i mean what other sports interest you so you know his love is rugby uh, apart from cricket do you or do you even like cricket uh, not a great deal, no. <laughs> uh, I enjoy my golf. Um, it's just a good thing to pass time. Uh, I wish I actually started playing golf when I was a lot younger. I only started playing a few years ago. Um, so, yeah, I uh, only met it later on in my life. But, yeah, I enjoy my golf. I enjoy watching a bit of footy. Um, but not a great deal. I don't like watching a lot of sport. I think it's uh, you just get so preoccupied in sport because you're a sportsman. I you think you've got to watch sport, which is... Uh, a bit of a balancing act that you have to juggle. When you play, when you play golf with Dean, you have to have earmuffs on. <laughs> Why? Because I'm always shouting, oh. get in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> there, should be, there should be a language barrier there. Uh, 18 <laughs> hours. <laughs> uh, okay, so one out of three so far. Two, two questions to go from my side. And number four, this is a bit of a toughie. Who's the only person to light the Olympic flame and win a gold medal at the same Olympics? I have no idea. Of, uh, Olympic Games. Are you going to have a, are you going to give us a clue? Doggy. Mm -hmm. Surely we have to. Have okay. It's, it's this, it's this century. So like, so like recently. Yeah. <laughs> but it's in the two thousands. Okay, so it's not okay. Um, Alt of Kazi getting it immediately. Uh, uh, okay, Alt of Kazi. Okay, absolute badger. <laughs> is it a, is it winter or summer Olympics? No, summer Olympics, summer Olympics. Summer summer Olympics. The normal. Yeah. It, it might it might be both. I don't know, but I needed my research with, with summer. <laughs> summer summer Olympics. Somebody wanna. I mean. Uh, so, uh, listen, is that the, the last clue? Yeah, two thousand. Uh, uh, yeah, in the two thousands. Two thousands. And was that in uh, the flame? So, and so generally, the, so so generally, the the person that lights the flame is in is the local athlete in their country. It's a local athlete. So it was Sydney in two thousand. Uh, London was in twenty twelve. Yeah. Sydney was. 2000, 2004 Brazil, was... Brazil never won a gold medal. So 2016, yeah. you can scrap Brazil. Uh, 2012, there's loads of British people there. Jessica was Innes. Jessica Innes, she won a gold medal. But she didn't light anything. I don't you reckon she wouldn't be the face of lighting the flame. You want her to light your flame, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking it's not too... Th I've got a I've got a hunch. It's um, uh, it was in Australia. Um, I'm just trying to. Uh, well, Michael, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Phelps. No, they didn't want a gold medal. Australian runner. Kathy Australian Freeman. runner. Kathy Freeman, the 400 meter runner, potentially. She's from Australia. I know she won gold medals for us. What about Mo Farah? She, 2012. He, he didn't like the flame. Gonna push you for an answer. Doggy, go with the, I don't know, go with 2000 in Sydney. I'm just, I don't know. Kathy Freeman's won gold medals for days. And I, know she I, know, I know she had, did she like the flame though? 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe just 2012. Mo Fatter, the world record. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Mo Fatter. Final answer. Mo Farah is the final answer. That uh, would have come through in uh, England or in London, 2012. 2012. Uh, got to go answer? back 12 years prior to 2000 because a, a certain Miss Kathy Freeman lit the flame. And that means Dino was right, but the final answer was incorrect. So, Dino, uh, yeah, well, Fudge, you owe Dino a drink. Sorry, Fudge. <laughs> Kathy Freeman indeed was it and uh, yeah the, the comments were off the hook everyone knew immediately um, except well I didn't know that I don't watch I don't watch the, who lights the flame yeah, she's, but not light, she's not lighting my fire but your, your teammate knew your teammate knew immediately so well done well, he, yeah, he, he guessed he guessed hard <laughs> he guessed he didn't know he for certain hard. okay so he basically one out of five it's not the best start no one out of four one out of four so one out of four but Okay, so the final question, we put this out to the audience, uh, and this came from Ian Turner, and he wanted to know, uh, if two goals is a brace and three is a hat-trick in football, what is four goals called? And it's, and it's a term that's used in cricket as well, a lot. Actually, it's, it's, it's used a hell of a lot, especially when you take some wickets. Fifer, I mean, I don't know. Three fifer. Uh, no. Uh, Hatrick, fourfer, fourfer, or four hall, or five hall. Five hall, four hall. Four wicket all, four hall. Uh, fourfer, was it a fourfer? Is that is that something that you would say? <laughs> I scored a fourfer today in soccer. I scored a no. brace. I scored a hat trick. I scored a, a fourfer. So. Yeah, you, you know oh, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you another clue. Your teammate is on fire tonight. It's a and hall. Clue. What did you say? A hall. It's a hall. H A U L. Hall. Dean, I'm gonna I'm gonna Patrick, step back and hall, I'm gonna double, I'm gonna double I'm gonna step I'm gonna step back and it's not double well, double hat would be six, I would imagine. Double hat trick six, of course. Yeah, double double hat trick six. You so, are fired because it's not me because I, I basically overruled you on the first <laughs> one. You did me on that. I said Spain, you said France, and then you said Cathy, and I said Mo Farah. So I think you said it. Didn't you, didn't you say Hall? Hall, yeah. Full Hall. Full Hall. Okay, is that your final answer? I'm, I'm not speaking. Dina, it's your turn to speak. Final answer. I'm going to go with the Hall, yeah. Okay. And uh, certainly we're not talking Andrew Hall, but it is H-A-U-L Hall. Well done, Dino. Jeez. You got it. You're on the nice. Two out of five opening round. Not a bad start. Uh, we've seen worse, I think. But uh, Dean, That's pulling it up there at the end. Well done. And well, well done, Fudge, on uh, knowing exactly what your stats were. Friend, I was very impressed with that. So two out of five, first up. Over to you, Ty. All right. So, uh, gents, uh, a little bit behind the run rate. No Duckworth Lewis to you. Come in and ruin it, though. No. Nah, so, ha, ha, yes, yeah, I, I don't get paid for this because it's terrible. Um, <laughs> all right, so we're going to the visual questions now. I'm going to put up a question, and then I'll ask you a question related Very funny. Uh, to that. So, question one is, I'd like to know who this gentleman is, but the question goes okay. a little bit further than that. He kicked our first points against the British and Irish Lions in 1997 in the first test. He went off at halftime and he never played for the Springboks again. Ever again. Ever again. And in fact, that was only his second test. It was a, a ridiculously... I, I think Coral Duplessis wanted him to marry his daughter or something. Not after Ian, I have no idea. So, yeah, I've never seen that down in my life before. He obviously plays in the back line. He doesn't look like a prop, no. <laughs> um, he kicked the penalty. What position did he play? Did he play for uh, Inside centre. Uh, inside centre? Mm. Not Brom from Straten, obviously. That's not mm. Brom, no. <laughs> Brom didn't just kick one, but he kicked many. <laughs> so he only played two tests. Only played two tests. One against Tonga. 
and half a test against the British and Irish Lions. And that was his whole career. You know, I really want to say Christian Stewart, but I mean, I could be wrong. I don't think it's easy, but... I've never seen that Oak in 97 before, so... Thinking about an inside centre who played for South Africa back in the day, I mean, Christian Stewart was a guy who played for Province. I don't know if this it was is, him, though. This is, this is your, this is your forte, you know? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> but in 1997, I was, I, was, I was 14 years old in 1997, but I mean, I don't know. I was so more 10, than two. It's more than two decades ago. I mean, I'll tell you something right now. We didn't have TV then. <laughs> well, Balcom certainly didn't have TV. Then, but... uh, then you had to steal TV to get TV. <laughs> I've got no, no, no. Christian Stewart. Though. I mean, I don't know another guy. Yeah. No, nah, not... look, it's not a bad guess. Uh, I think Christian Stewart got about 10 or 11 tests for the Springboks. Oh, okay. I didn't know this myself, uh, but this guy's name was Edrich Libba. No, I'm not going to get that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was and never going to get that. And I'm pretty sure he no. comes from Valcom. Um, no, uh, I have no idea where he's from. He's a, he's a, a cricket player. player. Yeah, from a cricket hmm. But um, obviously, speaking about the British and Irish Lions, I mean, Fudge, obviously, you're about to go overseas now for some cricket, but uh, how stoked yeah. were you uh, for the, the British and Irish Lions series? That's currently... I am still stoked. Yeah, I know. 2021. It's going to be massive. Uh I might not be here for it, but it comes around once every 12 years. They're talking a big game over there, Kathleen being the coach, um, talking about Mari Toje being the best lock in the world. And I was like, come on, guys. Uh, I think we got a few pretty good locks in our country, by the way, who are World Cup winners. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited, and I can't wait for us to just maul Owen Farrell. I just I don't like his style of play. I think yeah. he's uh, he, he whines a bit. He whines oh, quite his a lot. Face. <laughs> his face. I think it's his face. It's his well, face. He's got I can that imagine. Bicycle face. I can imagine <laughs> that bicycle face. Um, I can imagine that if he sees Chesham Colby on his on his side of the field, he's going to try and run to the other very quickly. Yeah, no. I just hope that I mean it will be a great series. I mean, if it goes and when and when when it goes ahead, it's going to be. And I just want to wipe the smoke of Gatlin's face as well. He was 12 years coach of uh, Wales. Didn't didn't really do much. And now he just lost the first two games. No, he just he, he just lost to these first two games. Uh, being the head coach of the Chiefs. I don't like Gatlin. Yeah, Shocker. it's quite enjoyable when his son hit the drop kick to. to exactly, I can't enjoy that actually. All right, so, so here yeah, comes going to be massive. Here comes question two. Fudge, you have a Some slight dogs. advantage. On this question yes. in that you've played a Tuesday night quest quiz before uh, and you know who's asking the question. So I want to know this this is a I mean, team's logo. All I want to know, I don't want to know the team's name, I want to know what sport do they play. No, nah, but is this like a Naya Mikey when uh, Thursday? What's no, no, Thursday? it's 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 a <laughs> no and, and it's yeah. a, a fairly <laughs> common sport. It's not like a Kabaddi or Cheese rolling or log upside down climbing. I mean, it looks like a it looks like a, a Caribbean cricket team, but I mean, I don't know. No, I mean, would I really ask a cricket question like that? No, I'm not. No, gonna... no, I don't, I don't know. know what. I don't know. Soccer, soccer. Football. So, football, football, American football, or or soccer, like one of the two, or baseball, maybe. Fudge, it's a, it's a sport pretty close to my heart, and I always ask a, a question along these lines. So that night, I know you were listening to Cyril give us a lockdown extension or something, but um, it's a sport that uh, I, I spend a lot of time writing about as well. <laughs> I, I can't give too much more clues than that. Derek has a podcast on the sport with oh, me. Word. I mean, it looks like maybe rugby, Pacific huh? Island rugby. Potentially, Dina. Dogs. Looks like a bad drawing, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it looks like a, a two-year-old a, a two year old drew it. The rugby, maybe. I mean, I don't know, Dean. I have no idea. If you have a suggestion, Dean, let me know. Let's go with that. I was going to say like some island soccer. Okay, I, I, I'm going to throw one more cl cl clue your way. It is an Olympic sport. It's also not helping. Well, it helps that it's not rugby. <laughs> That's what I was going to say as well. That's, that's, that's at least something. Soccer is an Olympic sport. Baseball is, is baseball's not an Olympic sport. 
That's a team logo. Like yeah, it's a, a team logo. emblem. Yeah, a club, a club's logo. Uh, it is an uh, Olympic sport, which means soccer is high up there. Baseball is not an Olympic sport. Or is baseball now? Baseball is on. Dino. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but, uh, okay. um, let's go with go with that just go with it yeah jesus it, it could be like i don't know Papua New Guinea or something i don't know soccer all right no. so locking in soccer it's not soccer um it is the club logo of a team called kempong which is a <laughs> which is currently one of the top hockey teams in holland and oh, uh, pretty much the mm. whole of europe and oh, I, yeah. I, derek and i have a hockey podcast derek learns about hockey every week through it oh, um, my word. i can't believe i didn't get that oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right yeah. formula one here not who is that driver i can't go that easy Lewis hamilton yeah okay yeah there, there we go Lewis hamilton that's correct let's move on no um, You're gonna ask what, what do you think I'm gonna ask, Fudge? The trophy. Circuit is based on the trophy. I am gonna ask which circuit he won that trophy at. I'm gonna go like Catalonia. Yeah, it looks like the Spanish. It's a bit league. like, a, or or it could be Japan because it looks a little bit like a dragon. I can't see that. Picture. It's obviously not the best photo, but we'll get half a point for that. Um, <laughs> We need all the we need all the half of, we need all the half of points we can get, boy. Can you put the photo up again, please? Isn't it still there? No, no, there. Doggy, that looks a bit dragony because it looks like there's scales on the edge of that uh, trophy. So it's obviously like a Japan kind of jaw. Japan or is it the the Spanish one? Or could be Mexico. <laughs> Man, why would you throw that on in there? <laughs> the colors, the colors are obviously make equal. Man, you've only got about five more Grand Prix to go if you just list them. <laughs> <laughs> throw them all out yeah. there. I can put it back up if, that, if it makes any difference. Yeah, put it back up there. I'm going to take it because it's on there for too short a time. Uh, the color suggests Spain, Dina, but I mean... That would be a failure. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yellow and red is Spain. I've never, I've never seen that trophy before in my life, to be honest. I don't think I stay behind for the trophy handouts and Grand Prix. Because it's always Hamilton winning. Yeah. Dino, pick one. Spain or Japan. What, Japan? Is, is there a Japanese Grand Prix? Like, I mean, I don't know. Is there, there is. There is, a, there is a Japanese Grand Prix, but I'm not familiar with their silverware dogs. <laughs> I usually get kind of sidetracked when there's a bird on the end and another one on the other end. Well, I'm going to tell you that uh, on the on the uh, YouTube feed, we've got Malaysia, we've got Catalonia, we've got China, yep, and Japan. But I think uh, they're just saying they said Japan to someone who said, what did you say? <laughs> so uh, China, Malaysia... <laughs> So it's not Catalonia. Japan. I, I mean, I'm what not saying. What about Malaysia that. dogs? Not a bad shot. Not a bad shot. I was my forward in this thing. I'm trying to look at this <laughs> thing here, but I can't. I can't. I can't check it. Can you see it now? No, I just. I can't see it. It's just. I'm looking for a clue, but I mean, I don't know. I even Malaysia? zoomed in. I even Malaysia? zoomed in on the bottom of the bloody trophy, and it doesn't say a name there. Um. No, I've made, I've made that Mala mistake once before. Singapore does night <laughs> Grand Prix. Is that, is, that, is that photo taken at night there, Dance? What's going on? No, it's, a, it's a daytime photo. Right? It's a daytime photo. So it's, not, it's not the Singapore Grand Prix. The, the... That's like, I can't believe yeah. this isn't answering my call, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's push you guys for a, a guesstimated answer. As you go, bud. You, you go with what you think. Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia or China, the Chinese Grand Prix. Go Chinese, because that's also a similar. Looks like a, stuff. Yeah, go, somewhere go, there. 
Go with it. Go with it. Go with it. Malaysia Grand Prix. Is that the one you're locking Final in? One. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. This is, I think it's China. Do you know, quickly, do you want to change it? Uh, no, I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's that. I don't know for a fact. I think it's China, but I honestly think it's that. Okay, don't go for it. Okay, China. China, the final answer. Okay, so we're locking in China. Um, yeah, it's not Malaysia. We went into a super over there to try and get to this one. But, <laughs> Fudge, had you locked in Malaysia, you would have been kicking yourself because it is, in fact, China. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> See, I had a feeling like a cultural. Okay, but you, you just okay. So we at least we got a point. Yeah, you got there. a we point on the board. Got a point, but and so now we're going over to your sport. So, question four: I'd like to know which two countries play Test cricket for this trophy. So look at the sponsors at the back. Oh, no, it says Royal Stag. No, <laughs> that is India, Pakistan, yeah. Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, Royal Stags, Bangladesh. Like Quite big Goes in for. Sri Lanka. The trophy does uh, give you a clue. Somehow. It's obviously Mura Litterin on the dogger. Can you show it again? I uh, yeah, I, I think if I talk, just no, if you pin the video. It's, it's obviously. It's an offy and a leggy. So, which two, so you're talking me which two countries? Which two countries play Test cricket for this trophy? I'm going to say Sri Lanka. Yes. What's the other country? Well, I'll put you out of your misery. You've got half a point for Sri Lanka. Thanks. Is okay. one of them? And the other one looks like an offy dog. Yeah. I think it's Moody's hands both ways. Like it's his one and then his hands are like a bit like that as well. That's I mean, I don't know. Is, is there a name to the trophy? There is I a mean, name to the trophy. <laughs> Can we get I've the name never, to the trophy? I've never I can't tell trophy. you the name to the trophy because that'll tell you the answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to see the sponsor to the Gateway, Chai, Royal Stag, Miller, KK. Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, or Sri Lanka, India? India, one of the Sri Lanka, India. Dogger? I don't know about it. Uh, trophy looks. I, I don't think I ever want to win that trophy. It looks much. No, it's a tight trophy. Well, you, want to carry it in your it's, hand. It's like highly it. unlikely that you will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you'd have to no. go live somewhere else for a while. I'm jumping shop now, boys. <laughs> <laughs> to Sri Lanka. I, I reckon definitely Sri Lanka, and I reckon we got Pakistan, dog. Pakistan. Pakistan, Zindabad. Pakistan, Zindabad. Okay, go for the dog. Yes, I'm, I'm taking a fly with All Pakistan. All right, let's, let's lock that in. So those two hands, the one hand was Muralitherin, but this is called the Muralitherin Worn Trophy, oh, and yeah. it is played between Sri Lanka and Australia. Australia. It is a disgustingly you know, know. average trophy. Sri Lanka have won it once, and Australia have won it four times. So, um, wow. you know, talking about the two spinners, uh, Muralitherin Worn, Around world cricket, and, and it's for both of you. Who's who's the toughest spinner you've played against? Zayed Ajmal. Back when he was at the Titans, or more for when he was at Pakistan? <laughs> In the net. No, he, was, he was easy with the Titans. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, who was the toughest? I think Aji was tough, Ajmal. Played against him here in South Africa. You know, it was in a one-day series, uh, but uh, I think the toughest was Janta Mendes. Played for Sri Lanka. One of my first overseas tour went to Sri Lanka, and he, that was when he was number one in the world. He did me for sweets. I couldn't pick it. Oh, brilliant, man. <laughs> and I mean, and obviously, you, I mean, you guys have got to travel to a few cool countries and stuff. I mean, wh what's, what's number one from a, a purely life experience not from a cricket experience what's has been the best okay. country you've got to go to oh, sri lanka i would say out of the asian asian country no man what's the best place you've got anyway ever yeah. ever yeah. ever is what he's yeah. asking you <laughs> it's probably the caribbean <laughs> barbados Far and the away. caribbean is maybe st kitts and nevis uh, anything anything that you can say on a recorded stream on why uh, it's the best place 
No man. <laughs> good enough answer. Good enough answer. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's go to no. question number. No, we'll, we'll leave it there. Let's leave the viewers wanting some more. <laughs> the last last visual question. You're sitting on one and a half out of four. Uh, this no. man is ranked 15th in the world. Where is he from? He looks Spanish or Mexican. Uh, he's Russian. Did he give us the answer? No, no, he's from Russia. I thought you said, where's he from? Yeah. Oh, my bad. I mean, what's his name? <laughs> uh, that, that's what I said. Uh, he gave us the answer. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take a fine for that for sure. No, that's definitely Two strong. fingers, please. Yeah. yeah I, um, I mean, well, I don't know. Well, well don't you, know, you think. Apologies, apologies, everybody. Yeah, yeah, no, you gotta just, that's two fingers. Eh, like a... Where is he from? He's from Russia. He's from, he's from Russia. Uh, Did we get that point? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, who is he? I, I, don't, I don't know his surname. I honestly don't know his surname. Do you know his first know his name? name? Yeah. It's yes. definitely not Marat Safin, so that's about what's, it. That's all the Russian name, tennis man? players. His name is uh, in South Africa, it's, it's Karen. <laughs> You are right. Yeah, that um, is Karen. But I don't know his surname. His name's Karen. Uh, don't know his surname. His well, name. I'll, I'll definitely give but you a point for that. I promise you, his name's Karen. Um, K a r i n. No e n. Like is Karen. It? Yeah. Karen no. Douglasovich. Yeah, a... a, there's a witch there somewhere, but. <laughs> For uh, for and that's a great guess. It's it's not a correct guess, but I will give you half a point for the Karen, because it is Karen okay. Kachanov. Kachanov. No, well, Kachanov. Kachanov. So that right. gives you uh, two points for this round, uh, which keeps Jesus. you on par with what uh, we've seen in the previous weeks, and uh, gives you four four so far. So uh, that's Derek. Tough, yeah, cool. Thank you. I'm okay. So this is uh, easy to explain. I'm going to play five audio clips. You just need to tell me. Who these people are okay, okay. so keep your your volume nice and loud and you need to tell me who this person is um you know it came down to one game we gave ourselves that opportunity in this tournament um with so much on the line and and ultimately australia stepped up and and they were too good for us on the night who did right. you say was too good for them on the night uh australia but I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it again here we go um you know it came down to one game we gave ourselves that opportunity in this tournament um, with so much on the line and, and ultimately Australia stepped up and, and they were too good for us on the night. But... Who is that guy? Yeah, no staff, huh? um... no, no, Was that the New Zealander? It must be a Kiwi dog. I, I know. A not a, it's definitely not an English guy. So call me England. I I'll play it for you one more time. Here That's we go. Not an English accent. Uh, I, I can give you a clue. It's, it's not a Sri Lankan. Here we go. <laughs> um, you know, it came down to one game. We gave ourselves that opportunity in this tournament um, with so much on the line, and, and ultimately Australia stepped up, and, and they were too good for us on the night. Who is this? This guy was a great rugby player back in the day, funny enough. A great rugby player. Yeah. What continent? Uh, what hemisphere are they in? No, you will. Yeah, I mean, you were on the right track earlier. Um, it's even the New Zealand dogs. I just don't know the guy. The guy sounds Lockie Ferguson. I'm trying to think who would do a team. Is, like is, is it cricket, Derek? Or is it. Uh, no, no, it's cricket. It's cricket. It's cricket. It's New Zealand, but I don't know who it is. Cup, Tom Cup, Latham? Or... Tom Latham. He's a former player. He's a former player, yeah. Okay, that, scratch that, uh, boys. I see Lace is shining at me. So Lace is topping the leaderboard at the moment. She's playing. So she was Warren Whiteley's teammate. Of course, she doesn't want you guys to do well. And every clue that I give out, I can uh, see the swear words. using you. Yeah, properly. <laughs> well, Lace, if you're here, in, we need all the help you can get there. <laughs> it's not like I don't think I, I I think you guys will be safe, but we need all the help we can get. I reckon okay. they had like a sub B night that first so, night. So this bloke, I mean, this bloke is very well known. He was a good rugby player back in the day, 
but he's not known for rugby. So former player that played rugby and cricket is Ian Smith. No, but that was it's but that it's, doesn't it's fairly doesn't recently sound like though. It. No, it doesn't no, definitely not. Smith. It's not fresh ball. Yes, sir. Kane Williamson, I mean I don't know though. Kane Williamson. He's not a former player. It's a former player. Like, like it is in a, like he's retired. Shane Bond. A couple of answers coming yeah. through. Jandre Hubert, he's right up there. He's done well. He knows what's going on. Looking at some other comments. I think Alta Kazi again. Oh, he's a badger, man. He's Google, man. He has Google there at home. <laughs> okay, final answer. Do you know? I don't know. Yes. Go Shane with, Bond. Uh, Three, I've never heard of Shane Bond. Two, rugby, one. Martin Crow. Martin Crow. The late Martin Crow. Uh, no. That was uh, one Brendan McCullum. Yeah, I was thinking of that. I've never heard of him playing rugby either. But. Uh, no, no, no. Not, he didn't do it professionally. But he kept Dan Carter out of uh, the, I think it was Christchurch Boys High. And, and I don't uh, think I've ever heard him speak <laughs> in my life. Absolutely <laughs> honest. Al Tazi, meanwhile, defending himself. He says he never Googled. He knew exactly who it was from the outset. Okay. Now, this one, this is quite tough. You've got to listen up very closely. Just a few words mentioned from the person that I want you guys to identify. Um, not the commentator. It's the second voice that you hear. So there's two commentators. One guy's going to be speaking up front. The second voice, I want you to tell me who that is. So England in possession. They haven't had much of this ball. And they kicked it away again. Toby Flood. Don't sink. That guy was very upset. He doesn't sound like a commentator. He sounds like the ref. <laughs> okay, let's hear it again. Yeah. Just... Do you know yeah. the... You, the who's, that, who's that flamboyant ref, dogs? Uh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's not him. Let's hear it again. Here we go. So England in possession. They haven't had much of the ball. And they kicked it away again. Toby Flood. Don't sink. Yes, yeah, so another... Not a fan of England kicking the ball away. Was he? Was he? Was he commentating that game? He was. was that he, like? he was commentating. He was co-commentator. Co-commentator the game. Obviously, Eng pro England. Yeah. Chris Robshaw. Uh, he's a he's a former player turned analyst. Yeah. What's the guy? <laughs> Tindall. Mike. No, Mike Tindall. Ball headed guy married to Zara Phillips. Let's do it one more time. So England in possession. They haven't had much of this ball. And they kicked it away again. Toby Flood. Don't towards... sink. Look, he's not know. happy, eh? No. No, no, no. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Do you know? Probably do you have any clue? Absolutely, bro. I was going with Nando <laughs> Lowen, but I thought it was a bloody ref. No, it's somebody that's played rugby for England and he's now obviously. Analyst, I'm trying to think of Brian Abana did some stuff with a few guys at uh, but uh, yeah, 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 you were pretty close there, yeah. Brian, Brian Abana did some stuff for, for rugby in, 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 in the UK, Mike Tindall. Uh, no, do you have an idea? No, me, I'm trying to play Sandcloud so I can try and see if I can get it. No, I have no idea, <laughs> mm, full victory. And I can tell you what, no one's no one's got it on the channel yet. No, nah, yeah. no, because one. it's it's like a phantom. It's, it's a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> You'd love to be described as a unicorn, this guy. Derek, Derek is this yeah. how you tell the world you aren't a Titans fan? <laughs> what? Asking this is how Derek tells everyone he's not a Titans fan by asking you guys such hard questions. Yeah, as a Lions fan. It's, it's, it's because I am a Titans fan that I've got to make them hard because everyone knows my allegiance to the Titans and it's easy. Yeah, so no, it's because because I love them so much. Uh, Your so allegiance applies so to what fine. color the money is, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doggy, um, I'm, a, I'm a Springbok fan yeah. and a Proteo fan. Green. <laughs> I don't know, dog. I honestly don't know. Will Greenwood, maybe? Will Greenwood? Will that's Will a Greenwood, thick, that's, a thick, that's a thick... thick We've got our first thing. answer coming through. The correct one has just arrived. Thick answer. What's the answer? And it's come from Stain Duplessis. 
And I'm going to have to push you three, two, one. Answer. Mike Tyndall. Mike Tyndall, who's now royal, actually. Um, but uh, he wasn't in the commentator's box. That was Brian Moore, the former England hooker, nicknamed Bulldog. So when you said Brian and Banner, that's why I said, hey, there we go. Okay, next up, who is, who is this person? There was one match I was playing, and this person kept telling me what to do, right? So then I kind of wanted to, like, um, ask him what his ranking was and stuff. <laughs> She's, she hits flat balls. You can do it. I mean, he was nice about it. At least he wasn't mean, you know? Um, it was kind of... And I actually did do it twice, and it did work. I think I know that is... What were you going to say? I'm that young uh, American tennis player that won that the new revelation. Um, Coco Goff. Yeah, Goff. Because she's quite like naive, and when she does interviews, she's very like she's still like kind of immature with her answers. And she's what about like, Naomi Osaka? Ah, as well. Just let's 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 play it again. Here we go. Just let's just picture Osaka. Yeah. Uh, okay, here we just, go. There was one match I was playing, and this person kept telling me what to do, right? So then I kind of wanted to, like, um, ask him what his ranking was and stuff. She's, she hits flat balls. You can do it. I mean, he was nice about it. At least he wasn't mean, you know? Um, it was kind of... And I actually did do it twice, and it did work. Doesn't sound like Coco Goss voice. No, like, I think like, it's as in like, like that... Uh, Thick, thick American accent. When she said yeah. ball, she said it some. She said it. No, oh, mm. um, mm. I, I, I think this is. I think this is the one question in uh, half an hour that you're actually on the same page now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's still be part. wrong though, Dina, because I, th I, I, I think Ty and Derek have it have it in for us tonight. I think go with Sarkar uh, <laughs> Shashini. Yeah. Yeah. Final okay. answer. Naomi Osaka. Yeah. So your one option was uh, Coco Graf, and that would have been completely wrong. wrong. Naomi Osaka is the one. Well done. Nice. First in the audio. Nicely done. Okay, so you're off the mark in the audio. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's, let's double that figure. Who's this? I'm a passionate Arsenal fan and whoever was here whenever I did last did it, I think it was three years ago, Arsenal were playing Tottenham and a gentleman just sitting there was giving me the score. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was, uh, I think it was something like Tottenham 4, Arsenal 2, so my concentration levels wavered slightly. But that's where it comes from. I'm passionate about them and hopefully they're two up now at Swansea. And so that's obviously a very, very old clip because they said that Arsenal were out. Hey, they went to Matt. <laughs> 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 oh, they had an inter, inter squad game. Yeah. <laughs> well, they played Liverpool. Win win situation. Southampton. Well, you're going you're gonna to have to play it again. I mean, I don't yeah, know. Of course. Well, so obviously, obviously, and, and obviously he's a, not he's a, a former. It's not a, it's not a random person speaking. It's, it's very relatable to you guys. I'm a passionate Arsenal fan and whoever was here whenever I did last did it, I think it was three years ago, Arsenal were playing Tottenham and a gentleman just sitting there was giving me the score. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was, uh, I think it was something like Tottenham 4, Arsenal 2, so my concentration levels wavered slightly. But that's where it comes from. I'm passionate about them and hopefully they're two up now at Swansea. And you're and a former Arsenal player. I mean, no, no, no. I'm going to give you another clue. I mean, the... I don't know. The, the, the topic that he's speaking about belies the sport that he's involved in. <laughs> and, not a footballer. And, and, I, and I can guarantee you that you've heard his voice plenty and in person. Jesus. So I reckon it's potentially like a cricketer that's obviously massively into, uh, into soccer. Into Arsenal. Okay, well, go on again. I mean, okay, one, one, last time. Last, last time. time. So, I, do you have an idea? Because you're a you're a massive Arsenal fan. Shh, don't tell people that. I'll get abused. Um, <laughs> I, I have an outside idea, but I'm not sure if it's this. Okay, one more time. I'm a passionate Arsenal fan, and whoever was here whenever I did last did it. I think it was three years ago. Arsenal were playing Tottenham, and a gentleman just sitting there was giving me the score. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, it was, uh, I think it was something like Tottenham 4, Arsenal 2, so my concentration levels wavered slightly. But that's where it comes from. I'm passionate about them. And hopefully they're two up now at Swansea. And you oh. it's a cricket commentator. It's, it's a, it's, it's a, I think it's definitely in the cricketing lines. Um, it's a cricket commentator. He sounds like oh, a geezer as well. A couple of comments coming through. We've read you saying... Robert Key, definitely. Don't know when last Ravi Ravi's seen Robert Key, but he, he's definitely not that old. Um, no offense, Ravi. Uh, a couple of people saying Michael Vaughan. No, not Vaughan. Not Jeff. Not, uh, not Jeff. Not Bumble. Mm, not Strauss Nasser. Been mentioned. Alex Stewart's been mentioned. No, not Jeffy. So what's that for? Nick, Dominic Cork? Nick Knight? Nick what Knight? No. no. I don't think it's Nick Knight. It might be Dominic Cork. Dominic Cork, but he's from up north. Played for Leicester for a while. Uh, so I'm thinking in London. Uh, yeah, Cork. What about Cork? I mean, I don't know anybody's. I can't. I don't know that voice is unfamiliar to me. I don't know. And and I and I guarantee you've heard it. You've heard it plenty. I'm sure we I, have. I think I think you, Fudge. I think you have. Uh, I I know for a fact that Dino, you would have had, like in person as well. Like you've actually spoken to this person, like a lot. Mark Nicholas, maybe? No, it's not Nico. It's not, it's definitely not Nico. Um, yeah, going to push you. Jesus. Three. So, so that one, Coco Knight, Oh, I don't know if it's Knight. No, it's quite dry and like boring to listen to. I know that act didn't set me on fire, but I mean, I don't know, dog. Yeah. Quickly. Final answer: three, two, one. Go for it. <laughs> cork, 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 cork. You're locking that in. Okay, so, cork, I, mean, so I, I don't know how often you speak to Dominic Cork. I can't imagine it's too much. But um, the reason why this guy you would have spoken to a lot is because he's an umpire. And Gunner. his name is Gunnar. Uh, Ian Gould. Ian Bastard. Gould. And Gunnar yeah, Gould. Yeah, locking it in. Locking it in. <laughs> but that doesn't sound like him at all. So no. Gunnar Gould. Was that when he was sober or when he was first? So <laughs> yeah, he was, just, he was sober. He was I've only actually, drinking yeah. apple juice. Yeah. The same as we're enjoying. So Gunnar Gould, unfortunately, you missed out on that. Okay. So, last one of the audio rounds. Who is this one? It's a long one, so I'll probably cut it halfway. But uh, who's this? There are those um, lessons that you do learn, but again, it just comes down to also you know, having a structure and, and, and understanding, uh, you know, putting in the time, understanding what you, your outcome is and what your goal is. Um, for me, I started more focusing on um, the commodity side because I felt that I had more success on supply and demand models and being able, being able to understand and predict future prices versus, um, you know, the sign-offs. And, you know, you get funny things, obviously, especially in South Africa, it's quite difficult sometimes to trade because you you obviously have a lot of political interference and, um, you know, uh, tariffs and this and that. They've gone to mining and, um, you know, CEOs do funny things from time to time. So, yeah, that's uh, someone who is in the sporting realm, done incredibly well in sport and obviously has branched <laughs> off into the business world now. I think I think it might be Cameron van der Berg um, because he's just recently retired and he's gone off into business and i'm not Good. sure if it's i'm not sure if it's a finance business or advisory business but i know he's gone off and it sounds awfully like like emma let's listen one more time here we go there are those um, lessons that you do learn, but again, it just comes down to also you know, having a structure and, and, and understanding, uh, you know, putting in the time, understanding what you, your outcome is and what your goal is. Um, for me, I started more focusing on um, the commodity side because I felt that I had more success on supply and demand models and being able, being able to understand and predict future prices versus, um, you know, the sign-offs and, you know, you get... Yeah, enough. You know... Go with it. Are you sure? But, um, it sounds very... Well, do it. Do it. Lock it. Okay, you're locking it in, Dean. Yeah. Cameron, 
Okay, so yeah, your captain's uh, putting you on the spot and you've locked it in. Cameron van der Berg is correct. Well done. I thought it was him, yes, doggy. Well, well done, well done, boy. That, that interview was actually on 702 on Bruce Whitfield's show, The Money Show. And wow, he, he, he fitted in perfectly. So we, we had the, the question earlier from Ty regarding uh, best countries to tour. Uh, but now I do want a cricketing side of things. So one of the questions that came through from Craig Woods, um, he wanted to know from both of you guys, which is the best international stadium that you played in? So Fadji, I'll start with you. Uh, I'll give you a top three. Okay. Uh, SCG, Sydney. Number one, uh, number two, Supersport Park, Pretoria. Number three, Dharamsala, India. Ooh, yeah, the Dharamsala is stunning. Do you know you? Number one is South Africa included, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your favorite. New- Newlands. Yeah. Um, so why did you just move to Cape Town, bud? <laughs> it's he, wants to play for, he wants to play for a winning franchise. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Um, I'd go with Newlands. Um, I'm going to go with Adelaide Oval. Um, and I'm going to throw in an Asian stadium in the Wankhede in Mumbai. Okay. Very, very cool places to go. Ty, over to you. All right. So six six on the board. Uh, and let's see how you finish this round ahead okay. of the shootout. Uh, as a massive rugby fan, obviously, Fudge, uh, I'm going to ask you a rugby question. But... I'm going to ask you a sevens question. And all I want to know is who is the all-time top point scorer in sevens rugby for South Africa? For South Africa? Oh, man. Um, Did he recently retire? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I feel like like that might go too far if I tell you that one. Uh... I know the most tries to see a Bellis and Nata, but he hasn't kicked the poles. Branko de Prea, uh, it's all Cecil Africa is obviously the Fabian Juries now. Probably Cecil uh, Africa, Dino. By my I'm, God. I'm only going with Cecil Africa. Yeah, I mean... He's he always kicked, like there, always. Always. He kicked for poles quite a lot in his day. I know see a Bellis and Nata scored the most tries, like a 200 and... Wasn't it like before he retired, he went like over a thousand points in his Mm. career? Cecil, Cecil Africa, that has to be. I don't know anybody other than that. No, I don't think we're on him. You want to lock it in? Yeah, why not? All right, let's lock it in. It's a good start to this uh, this over. One of the opening ball, yeah. (laughs) Cricket is great. (laughs) Yeah, so South Africa <laughs> recently retired. Of course, South Africa all-time top point scorer. And of course, a little bit surprising because I thought he would hang on till the Olympic Games. Um, I, think he, I think he wanted to. I, I, yeah. I, I don't think it was his choice, to be honest. No, yeah, no, no contract renewal makes it difficult. Um, <laughs> but obviously, seven, Sevens has gained a lot of popularity in the rugby world, uh, much like T20 has in the cricket world. And across the, the, the three formats... Uh, uh, four day, five day, limited over, and T Twenty. What is your favourite <laughs> as a a cricketer to play? Fudge, we'll start with you. Um, I like four day stuff. Believe it or not, I've been kind of penciled in as a white ball cricketer, but I quite enjoy four ball stuff. Uh, yeah, the longer version of the game, a win is very sweet, especially when in a championship at the end of the long season, six month season, that's even sweeter. Uh, and then T20 would be second on my list and then 50 over in that order. But uh, yeah, Red Bull cricket is one that I enjoy, that I savor the most. Uh, and T20, yeah, because. Titans do okay in T20, so we've been very successful, and I, I can't enjoy the intensity of it. No, absolutely. Look, I am a Titans fan, not because the two of you are here, but uh, I'm, an, <laughs> I'm, an, I'm an Easterns boy, and obviously when I Easterns like it, and man. Northerns joined, naturally had to support the Titans. So uh, what about yourself, Dean? What's uh, Which format is your favorite? 
There's only one format in cricket, I'm afraid, and that's test cricket. Oh, um, fantastic stuff. Suck my balls, dude. <laughs> you, can put that, you can put that down as one, two, and three. Uh, ah, but awesome. no, I, also, I enjoy the, the shorter <laughs> formats. I enjoy T20 and one-day stuff, but, but four-day and five-day cricket. Do you open the batting for our country in test matches, do you? I, don't, I, I, I didn't know. Yeah, that. 68 <laughs> games. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about, for question two, let's talk about your two careers. <laughs> Uh, Dean, you've obviously played quite a lot of test matches for South Africa. Fudge, you played a lot of one days and T20s. So I want to know, which of you two, this is your question, which of you two has scored the most sixes? Or hit the most sixes? In, your in international cricket or in Inter International cricket? cricket? I would say Fudge. No, I'd say me. <laughs> <laughs> Big slogger you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I would imagine that that has, has to be me. 68 test matches. How many sixes do you reckon you hit? One a Maybe test match? 68. Maybe 68. <laughs> that yeah. seems like it's a trick question. It does seem like it. I think they... Because they you've, like... you've scored big hundreds, and I'm, I'm, I want to say that... The blocker has got more. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, I feel like it's a trick question, really. Is it? Is it? Or is no, it a double know. bluff? I played 99 games though, Dean. If I had to six every once a game, even off, oh, I played 99 white ball games. So if I hit is this six... for is this for points or do you have Yeah, to this is for points. This is for points. Oh my sack of it! I was gonna make it harder and say you each have to tell me how many international well, it's sixes. Well, but... picking pretty hard though because I mean <laughs> I don't know how many sixes of it. I mean, come, oh, I don't know. No I remember a few that of it, but not. Oh. One of uh, extra cover against. Fortunately, Crick Info, <laughs> seems to, Crick Info seems to remember how many sixes you've hit. So yeah, but that, I don't. Know. They get paid to remember or yeah. jot that down, not us. Um, Dean, you want to go with? Yes, sir. Do you want to go I, with me? I, I, mean, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't think I have a lot. Or... I'm going with you because I don't think I have a lot. I, I think that I... like twenty odd. I think it's me. I. 59 sixes, 50 ODIs, 59 ODIs, 36s, half the time. Okay, Fudgy, locked in. All what right, so incredibly in Test Match Cricket, Dean has hit 25. And Fudge in One Day International Cricket has hit 25. But Fudge also has 16 T20 sixes, so Fudge is the correct answer. 41 plus 25. Yay! I mean, is is uh, obviously as a batsman, a big score is uh, is uh, the best thing. But there must be some lack of satisfaction when an oak is mouthing you off and you get to hit him out of the park. Yeah, it happened quite a bit. <laughs> Australia, two thousand and fourteen, Mitchell Stark around the wicket, bowling nine hundred forty clicks, hit him a extra cover for a six. One of my favourite days of cricket in my career so far. That was pretty special. Yeah. It's all right, gents, we're going to move on to a different sport in football. Uh, Premier League is back and Premier League is very popular. But now in football, there is a PFA trophy, there's a writer's trophy, but there's also a lesser known award is the Premier League Player of the Year. And they started awarding this all the way back in 1995. I want to know who was the first ever winner of it. Jesus. You're already players. on two out of two for this. Uh, the Player of the one. Year. The player. So it was 1995. So, so who who makes that decision? The association, like the the, the actual Premier League, yeah. Not play. It's not voted by player. I mean, I want to say Eric Cantona because he was in in and around that time. Who are Cantona? Say who are Cantona? Yeah. I don't know. Dean, do you know? How old are you then? Ninety-five. Eight. <laughs> I don't think you were paying attention. I was eight. Uh, uh, Ninety-five is obviously remembered for different reasons, yeah. Um, which was maybe it's a, it was. Week. What year did Blackburn win it? And Alan Shearer was like main name. Was it that? Oh, yeah, year? I think you're far away. I don't think you're far away from Newcastle and Shearer back then. Black, Blackburn, I know Blackburn won, won the league, if I'm not mistaken. 95, you said? 
Ja. 97, 98, 99, Alan Scherer, or Eric Cantona, or Dogger. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. Who do you think won the year? Won, won it that year, 95? United won a lot in the 90s. Like yeah. a lot. Don't you think but, it's like a throwaway thing? But there was know? one. There was Blackburn, I know, won it either 95 or 96, if I'm not mistaken. 94, 95, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna have to push you for an answer. Go, Shara. Um, Shara. I think it's I think it's the wild card. Shara. Okay, Alan lucky Shara. in Alan Shara. Wild card box guess. Well, in '95, Blackburn were pretty good, and Alan Shara was the reason for that, and he was the Premier League Player of the Year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go on. That was three out of three for this round. Let's see. Oh, no, we'll, you're right. We'll, you got it. You got we'll it. Right. Yeah. So here well, we go. That is a spanning the works. <laughs> Three out of we go. Um, speaking to Dean's other love golf here, Fudge, you played your international ODI debut against New Zealand. So I thought, who was New Zealand's last golf major winner? Right. I don't know. When the run rate's getting away from me in the over, I had to try and bowl a, a Yorker. Yes. Ah, oh, cricket metaphors. It's not mine, on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, close, but maybe wrong sport. <laughs> you say major yeah. winner or just... Major golf CGA winner. winner. No, major golf winner. Like one of the I, four. Yeah, one of the four. I think he won... Uh, it was either the US or the PGA. It was one of was those it the two. long time ago or fairly recent? I have no idea. Was it yeah, the New Zealand PGA though? No, no, it won the main PGA. A New Zealander won the main PGA. A long time ago or like or like in the 2000s? I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's probably just before the 2000s. It was, it was uh, US Open. Okay. And it was... Sorry, are you are you giving away dates here, Ty? Yeah, you can. No, not the dates. dates. Like, is no, it the nineties yeah. or the two thousands? It, it, it's it's mid two thousands. Mid two. I mean, I, I don't think. <laughs> Did I that make it a lot easier? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> mate, no. I was just wondering if it was an old Bali or like not the Bali. I don't even know any New Zealand golfers. I swear. No, most I people didn't. I know to New... Before this tournament, most people didn't know New Zealand golfers either. The closest I know is uh, Adam Scott, and he's not, not even New Zealand. There. That's as close he's as I can Australian. get. There. Yeah. Ryan I know Fox it. is the only New Zealand golfer I know. Who? Ryan Fox, but he hasn't won a major. He's won a he's won a New Zealand uh, major, which is event. Like well, then, doggy, I've, I've, I I can't even come up with a name. So I think we're gonna have to skip that. I, I have no idea. Can I? I've, uh, I do know another one. Okay. I, Go um, for it. I don't know his name. He's a bit of a toppy Campbell. I don't know if he's Australian or New Zealander. Ryan Campbell? No, no. no I mean, just say any name is better than nothing. Stephen Campbell. I want to say... Michael, Trevor Campbell. Michael Campbell. Michael Campbell. Okay, doggy. But that's I don't better know if, than I don't, zero on the... I don't know if he's Australian or New Zealand. But that's fine. At least it's something you've written down on the on the answer on the exam page. This is like me back at school again, but I'm guessing <laughs> that I, I've got the answers on the wrong questions again. Oh my word. Uh, okay, let's let's anything. let's lock an answer in. I'm gonna go Michael Campbell. Okay, Michael Campbell locked in. Michael Campbell is, New, is a New Zealander and he did win a US Open and he is the last New Zealander to win a major. So, yes, that is correct. No way. Well done. I've taken a Musa guess there. I said Ryan Campbell and you like, no, 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 Michael Campbell. Uh -uh. No, I knew it was a, like, I don't know if he was a POM or if he was a, like a New Zealander or Aussie. <laughs> but I, well, I had no idea. You guys have, you guys have righted the score sheet in this round four out of four so far can you make it the first ever full house round and the question is which two batsmen share south africa's test partnership record 
Ja, das ist ein Amla. Nein. Ist Rudolf das? Smith? Rudolf in Dippenau. What about Gibbs and, Gibbs and Smith at Newlands against Pakistan? It was a 300 opening partnership. Remember, oh, Jesus. Remember Rudolf and Butter against Bangladesh? It was a massive partnership. Do you remember that? But I don't know if it's the highest ever. Did Rudolf get two, the double hundred? He got 222. In his debut game. Did Butter yeah. also get 100? Yeah. He got a biggish 100 as well. Smith, I know Smith Gibbs got a triple century partner against Pakistan. Against Pakistan at Newlands with Wazim Waka. I was there that day. But I don't know if that's the highest. But didn't Callis and Amla, what was their score? At the Oval. Plenty. I don't know. Are you talking about test cricket or are you talking any, about? Yeah, any real cricket. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, Ian, you should know because you only one that plays real cricket here, but yeah, that's also true. But luckily, I don't follow stats like you think I do. <laughs> um, okay, let's push yeah. you for an answer. Oh, that one in bang bangers, man! I think Rudolf scored a triple. There was big scores there. I'm going with the Panar and Rudolf because I haven't heard of them. I haven't heard of that partnership. Right, I've been breaking it. It was like four. 420 or something. But also get a double. Okay, so. Nah. He's got his eyes. Oh, we, we're locking that one in. Let's lock it in. Rudolf and Dipana against Bangladesh. So, of course, everybody always remembers Smith and McKenzie scored 415 against Bangladesh. Yeah. And uh, many people think that was because both guys got to double tons. But to Dipana's highest test score is only 179. But of course, with the contribution of quite a few extras, uh, Jacques Rudolph and Butter Dipinar scored 429, the highest partnership by a South African pair. That no, means no. for the first time ever. That's it. Latuma. I mean, I feel Getting like, Derek, chat, we chat. probably should have had like a hat trick or something like that. But it's a full five wicket haul in that round. And that sets you That's up with. Ball. 11 going Dino, into the shooter. It's a Michelle. Yeah, it's a Michelle. Yeah. That's just a hole. That's just in soccer, you call that a hole. <laughs> no, it's not a hole, it's a Michelle. <laughs> that is a so, Michelle Farber. So, Derek, take us through the how the shootout works. Okay, yeah, very simple. Um, we're going to give you two subjects, and then you must pick one of the subjects, and you need to get 10 out of 10. Uh, you need to identify a bunch of names. So we'll give you the subject and you need to identify as many as possible. If you get 10 in a minute, then you get an extra point. So you can't possibly get 11 out of 10. But if you could just get six, then you get six. So if I give you the subject... Um, chess World Proteus Champions. Chess World Champions. There we go. And uh, you tell me, Bobby Fischer. Uh, no, are we gonna, we're going we're gonna to get naught. <laughs> well, don't worry. It's not, it's, that's not your topic. Your topic, no, okay. your your topics are Kabaddi champion players of the year. Pass and... off. <laughs> Did you ever, by the way, being in India quite a bit, have you ever seen Kabaddi? Yeah, yeah. I see it Kabaddi. every now and again. I so I don't understand it. No, but what, what is incredible is you you you, yeah. you have to breathe out the whole time you're attacking and say Kabaddi, 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 Kabaddi. I mean. And right. if I, when I was playing cricket, I never breathed while well, the bowler was running in. But in this game, you have to breathe <laughs> out consistently. Kabaddi, kabaddi. Uh, anyway, I digress. Here's your topic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to digress quickly because I, I've been told I've got to please read this. So there's a, a good friend of ours, Luwe, and he's a regular player on the Tuesday Night Lockdown Sports Quiz. And uh, he is a massive fan of yours, Fudgy. Um, I think I told you this privately before a couple of times. So he messaged me when we were in Namibia doing a podcast. And he mm. said, when I was at school, we had a community paper called the Tatler for the Southern yes. Suburbs in Cape Town. Mm. FB headlined the back page every single week. That's you, not Facebook. Um, scoring either three or two tries for Westerford. I had yeah. no idea who he was and didn't even know he played cricket. But I remembered his name thinking one day he may play for Western Province Rugby. So it was very cool when I saw him playing cricket provincially one day. And he also said, how dare you not mention that him to him that his Twitter fans are called Bihar Leavers. And we're out in force in support of the great man. 
<laughs> I follow him now on Twitter. I got the uh, we kind of have uh, chats on uh, about rugby and things. The funny thing is, I still have all those articles from the Tatler. There he is. And did you ever get yourself <laughs> that it's Berardine time shirt? Uh, I didn't. No. <laughs> what was well, what? Today's your lucky day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah if, if you look you... under the chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. So let's uh, go into the subjects for the shootout. My subject is Olympics. And mine is... What about the, Olymp- what, what about the Olympics? Which no, you'll, let, 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 yeah, you'll, you'll well, see now. And, and my subject is Rugby World Cups. Oh, God. And just, uh, just for one bit of clarity, if you mention 14 names, we take the first 10. So once it starts, um, but throw the names out so you get ten out there. So the which topic is, would know, you I like? Think, I think if if if, if you're gonna go with Olympics, Derek is gonna say like name all the silver medalists ever, or he's gonna <laughs> name like all the yeah all the bronze medalists ever that oh. Africa's ever had, not gold on or silver. On the Thursday. On the yeah, Thursday. On <laughs> the second day of the Olympics. Who were left handed? And then. Uh, but we have and to then, choose. We choose one of the topics. I yeah. know. And then the Rugby World Cups. I mean, I don't know what context you're going to ask in the Rugby World Cup. I don't know. There, well, there hasn't been many. There's been a lot of Olympics, though. I do back you with rugby, though. You know that. Yeah. I know. I, I, it's going to have to probably be rugby. All I right. The World Cups. So the we're going to take... Cups. Okay, so it is Rugby World Cup. Um, yeah. you will, a timer will come up. And I will ask you the question, and then you list as many of the answers as possible. There are 12 possible answers, but I'm only looking for 10. And if you get 10, obviously, you move to... So when, once we give the answer, say, for instance, you ask Springbok rugby players, and I say, Sia Kulisi, would you say yes, and then move no. on? Or, or what no, you, you just, you just I, list I as many of you. You just list all 10, and at the end, I'll tell you how many of the 10 are correct. Okay. okay. And if you just... We'll we'll obviously take that. So if you say something and Dean says, no, 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 definitely not. Scratch then we'll... that, scratch that. Okay, so if you okay, say okay. Springback rugby players and Dean says Israel Dag and then you say, no, no, he's not the Springback. Okay. We'll okay. remove it. No, I hope not. No. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's see. All right. See. So, your, so your question is the 2015. Are you going to count down though? No, I'm going to tell you the question and then you'll see up on my screen in Zoom, you'll have a minute counter running. You've only got one some... minute. Some rules, yeah, and like yeah. I want to just get the timing right and stuff. So you'll have one so minute. As soon as the minute's up, we'll stop. If you say That's anything fine. after the minute, we don't take it. The timer will be up on my little window in Zoom where you're watching. Um, so as long as you can see mine, you'll see the timer. And as soon as you get to 10, we obviously stop if you finish before the timer. Your question is, at the 2015 World Cup, I'd like to know all the Springbuck try scorers. Your minute is going. Okay. Dino. Oh yeah, I'm screwed. Yeah, but keep yeah, going. Your time, the... your time is running. Your time is running. I know go, it's go, going. Prana, 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 definitely. Uh, JP Peterson. Billy Leroux. JP Peterson. Um, has to be. Dwayne from Yeah. Uh, is Jacques Ferry tried? Was he there? Jean de Villiers. Uh, Pat Lambie, uh, Francois Hochard, um, Francois Stein. I don't know if you've been to that World Cup, but um, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, Francois Lowe, uh, Scott Berger, Victor Matfield. You got one Victor. name left. You got one name left. Ooh, told you we've done well there. Five well, seconds. I don't know if it's alright. Five seconds. Where's Mark Duplessis? Okay, there's all your names and your time was up. So, how did you do? <laughs> Just uh, transition across. Uh, Tough topic, you got it. <laughs> no, no, and, and also, like... you, you, it's very interesting because uh, certain players you wouldn't expect to score and other players you would expect, like Pat Lambie, didn't score any tries at all. So these were the players that did score tries, and then um, you'll hear how many you got. It was Adrian oh. Strauss, Damien De Allende, Luazium Vovo, Jesse Creel, Eben Etzebeth, wow. Fari Dupree, Luit De Jager, 
Skulk Brits, Skulk Berger, Bismarck Duplessis, Francois Lowe, JP Peterson, and Brian Habana. I heard in your 10, I heard Fareed Dupriya, Bismarck, four, Francois, Not JP, four. and Brian. I did hear, Dean, when you said Fareed Dupriya, I did take it. So it is yeah. five, five that you guys got, which 16. leaves you on 16 for the Knights. Uh, well, I just load up the scoreboard. Let's see where that puts you, Derek. Last. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take that. Jeez, no, I don't think it's last. I think uh, it's the bad, it's bad. Last. What's ever? What, what was the top? I think we're still dealing with 18. Yeah, but 16 and, 16 and a half, I think, was the last, I think. Uh, like. No shame. I think Rassi and Chris are still anchoring the table, unfortunately, for them. And uh, they, they sponsor this show. So... Yeah. <laughs> So they're, they're very, very kind. The anchor it and the anchor. At the, well, you see the big African freedom right at the bottom. So, so very nice of Rassi to to make others feel very, very good about themselves by being right at the bottom too. Jason <laughs> uh, Warren uh, still topping the table with 18 points, one clear of Brandon and Aiden, Justin and Chris 16 and a half for Han and Dean with 16, one clear of Rassi and Chris. Uh, 18. Uh, Spain did us in, didn't? What wasn't Spain. a good start? Oh. Over. Spain. Was Spain, jeez, yeah. Let's look back at, at what could have been. So Spain was a big one that you missed out on. Um, what else? We had the answer. We had the answer with Spain. Kathy Freeman. Got... Kathy Freeman. To... Kathy, Kathy Freeman, dog. Yes. Ah. Thank Kathy Dean. Woo. Um, that could have taken us up to second spot, and then I don't know, eighteen, and then I think then eighteen. Yeah, eighteen could have taken us closer to eighteen. But I reckon we can take those acts on the top, doggy. They, it's a retired oh, only player. You're gonna, you're I think gonna that. Return. I think those yeah. guys did the first quiz, and then it was a lot easier. And then they yeah. amended the quiz as they found other weeks. It was, <laughs> dumb. It was quite yeah. dumb in the beginning. The, 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 yeah, their, fir their first question <laughs> was, "What is Jerry considered to be the most aggressive move in chess? It's an opening move, and it's e5, f6." D3. I thought that exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, easy. <laughs> the, uh, I've, I've got to ask Dino because um, you are one of uh, 15 players that have uh, said that they want to captain the Proteus uh, in the future. I haven't um, said that once yet, by the way. But have you not? Just remember, that. Just remember, I haven't said that. Okay. So only 14 players have said it, not you. But But yeah. would you like to, though? I'm still not going to say anything. <laughs> well, well, to be uh, fair, though, you, you, you have captained the Proteus on, on two occasions, I think. And you yeah. also, you captained SS Schools back in 2005. Um, very few players have been able to achieve that feat. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice, I guess. But like, <laughs> I, like I've said in uh, interviews, it's not a, you're not applying for a job. This is not a yeah. job interview. It's, uh, it's a massive, massive... Uh, it's a massive undertaking and a massive honor, firstly. Uh, so you don't just go out in media and say what you want to say because it might not work in your favor. So that's why I just reserve. That's why I just reserve my comments when it comes to this. You guys know you got two national captains with you guys tonight. <laughs> First time ever. No, <laughs> three, three, three with Derek. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he, he captain. captain uh, East London mm. back when it was its own country in uh, badminton. Yeah. Oh, East <laughs> elusive badminton. Uh. <laughs> Fudge, uh, I, I wanted to ask you, so what's happening with, with Durham? I am currently just waiting, waiting for mm. a, a flight. Um, yeah, the flights are far and few between uh, and I'm just, yeah, it's, my hands are a bit tired at the moment. So I'm busy training. Although just physical stuff, like conditioning and stuff, no no, phys no skill workers, uh, although government has given us the go-ahead, they haven't approved the safety protocols from CSA just yet. Um, but hopefully they'll approve it soon. They, I th like I've mentioned, they approved PSL's uh, pr safety protocols and hopefully they'll approve uh, cricket protocols and then at least I can do some school work before going over. But for the meantime, I'm at home doing quizzes on a Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no better place to be. <laughs> hang, in, hang in tight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's about it, yeah. But looking forward to going over. I mean, it's uh, 
been a long time since I, since I played in the game of cricket. Yeah, well, I, I think that applies to everyone, including yeah, Ty yeah. and I. Uh, although it's a little longer than you guys, I, I've got to be honest. <laughs> I, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Ty, anything from you? Well, I was going to say, I actually played with my three-year-old this afternoon, uh, but uh, he's a lefty, so he models himself on Dean, and I'm um, just cuck. So yeah. he keeps... I don't know if that would be a wise idea of your of your of, of your of your kid to mold his. Well, like, look, teams. I mean, he hits a lot of oh, things can along I, can the I just, floor. Can I just come in here quickly? If he ends on twenty thousand, if he ends on twenty thousand career runs, he's had a good run, but. Uh, well, currently uh, he's on about six against Dad, um, so it's a good start. Trust me, it's yeah. a start. It's a start. Yeah. <laughs> okay. no, it's awesome, James. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Yes. We leave Warren and Lace at the top, but uh, I think you'll be back to to challenge another time. Thanks cool, a lot, man. Guys. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, thanks, yeah, Thanks, Just, you know, well. Take care, <laughs> thanks, Eric. So, so next week, I, I don't want to confirm absolutely one hundred percent, but uh, he told me that he's definitely going to be on. So let's hold thumbs. Uh, Brian Majati, former Springbok prop. Um, who's doing wonders uh, overseas, uh, especially from a, a content creation kind of thing. He's also brews his own beer, a great character, strong as an ox, and uh, yeah, a, a great guy to have on board. So hopefully we will see him next week, and uh, we look forward to seeing who his teammate will be. And hopefully he'll listen more to his teammate, unlike Fudgy, uh, during the first <laughs> round tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, gents. Uh, bye. Cheers, all. It's the quiz that is taking South Africa by storm. And now you can have a piece of the action. Letting the tension build, and that's enough thinking time. As a problem fan, it sticks out to me. Nice question. <laughs> the Raider Media Lockdown Sports Quiz has been a massive hit, with hundreds of sports fans and stars having been put to the test by hosts Derek Albers and Tyron Barnard. And due to public demand, it's going corporate. With the lockdown putting an end to social events for the foreseeable future, we need this to keep the game alive. Oh, this I should know. Get the Raider Media team on board to host your corporate quiz with staff competing from the comfort of their own homes. And if sport isn't your thing, fear not, as any subject is offered, all tailor-made to suit your company's needs. <laughs> the Lockdown Corporate Quiz. Email info at raider.media to book yours now. That was cool. The best day of my life.